I would like to talk about the Grashof condition. Um, we have defined Grashof condition as a condition which predicts the rotation behavior or the rotability of a four bar linkage. And what we mean when we say a linkage is Grashof is that one or more of its links makes a complete revolution. This is important because oftentimes in design there is some part of the mechanism that we may want to add a motor to or perhaps there's some part of the mechanism that we want to rock back and forth. So it's important that we understand how the, link it, the links in a linkage rotate. Um, this is helped in terms of the traditional four bar which is the most often used um, linkages in, a, in a machines and mechanisms. This is helped by the Grashof condition where we take a set of variables, four variables, one each uh, for each of the links in the four bar. So we'll assign an S to the shortest link and an L to the longest link and a P and a Q to the other two links. Where each of these variables ends up being equal to the um, dimension or the length of that particular link. Um, if the linkage is class 1, what we know in that case is that there will be the ability for one of the links to make a complete revolution. I'm going to go about showing you some of these based on the um, program Force Effect by Autodesk. Um, what we see here are class 1 mechanisms um, where the crank um, in the upper left uh, figure is able to make a complete revolution. Um, we have four inversions here. Uh, the first two at the top are not um, distinct inversions in that each of them um, has similar motion. Motion is not uh, different in, in these two at the top. <clears throat> For each inversion, again by inversion we mean that we are grounding a different link in the kinematic chain. So as you see in the top left figure link AD is grounded and in the other figure uh, to the right, top right, BC is grounded. Um, so AB is the crank and I'm gonna go ahead and start this uh, motion for each of these. And so we can see here in the upper left uh, where we have a crank rocker, um, we have the crank AB um, going around complete revolution and then we have the rocker CD which is just rocking back and forth. Um, if we turn our attention to the upper right, we see that um, our crank continues to rotate completely around and our rocker rocks back and forth. However, in this particular case, BC, which was our coupler, has now been made our ground link. And so it stays put where EF then um, is uh, the coupler in that top right figure. If we look down to the bottom left, uh, we see now that we've made the crank in this inversion, our crank has become ground. And in this figure, we have a double crank in which both of our links pivoted to ground, both JK and IL, both make a complete revolution, as does the coupler, uh, link LK. And <clears throat> we turn our attention now to the bottom right, where the rocker from our first uh, figure has been made the ground, and in this case we have a double rocker in that both of our links pivoted to ground simply rock back and forth, and our coupler makes a complete revolution. So these are all class one mechanisms. And the reason why we call them class one is because the shortest plus the longest link, we take those link lengths and we add them together, they are, those two variables or those two lengths added together are less than the other two links added together. Therefore, it is a, these are all class one uh, mechanisms. Now, let's turn our attention to class two mechanisms. In a class 2 mechanism, the shortest plus the longest added together is greater than the other two links. And I'm going to go ahead and, and show some motion of these and show that all of these class 2 mechanisms end up being triple rockers. And since this is a 4 bar in which there are 4 links, one of them being ground, if this is called a triple rocker, then we must mean that all moving links simply rock back and forth. None is making a complete revolution. And you can see that here. And so as we rotate, we see that none of the links make a complete revolution. Each of them just rocks back and forth. Let's go ahead and take the 
um, motor off that one and put it here on the top figure and let's see here and we'll watch that motion and we can see that that BC the um, the crank if you will has a range of about negative 130 degrees to about positive 130 degrees can't go further than that and it just kind of goes back and forth and the reason being is that at some point that BC and CD link become collinear and that's as far as the crank can move and then it goes back in the opposite direction and that is true for each of the inversions of the class 2 mechanisms now finally we're going to turn our attention to class 3 these are our class 3 mechanisms um, class 3 are also Grashoff but they're a special case of Grashoff this is a case where the shortest plus the longest is equal to the other two links and we're going to go ahead and show motion there um, in this particular case our upper left this is a parallelogram form um, the upper right we see an anti-parallelogram form where we simply have the BC line crossing the ground link so you see FG there the FG in the upper right crosses the ground link which is EF and then we have a double parallelogram there in the bottom left and in the bottom right we have a deltoid or kite form so I'm going to go ahead and get some motion there the unique thing about the um, special cases class 3 is that there are change points twice per revolution right here and again on the other side these change points occur right there we just passed it whenever the links become collinear and that's when your output becomes indeterminate so if this was a real linkage and not just a simulation what we'd find is that at this point right there it is possible for point C to come down or go up now for some reason in the Autodesk uh, program that we're running here C always tends to go up but this is, does not necessarily have to be the case and so I'm going to stop it I'm going to take off that motor and I'm going to just kind of see if as I move here we can get it to a point to where and you see how C did come down there so with me moving it I can cause it to move down or up but uh, as a possibility depending on how I'm rotating that see in this case it rotated differently and let's see well this is a change point and our other change point would be at this point when it's on that side in those two configurations we will not necessarily be sure of how the link will respond um, and so that's our special case um, you can read more about these cases um, online or in your textbook um, case one case two and case three of the Grashoff condition